Hello everyone, another digitising tutorial for Banana Designer Plus version 6 and you might be a bit puzzled as to why I've got a seahorse sitting here um, when uh, the uh, title of this video is Easy Applique Font and the reason I've done that is because both in the fish applique fish um, video and this video I'm looking at putting a fill stitch inside the applique outline and so that you can cover your fabric and in particular I've been playing around with mylar so this is my seahorse my latest design available on my website and it has the mylar inserted as the applique and um, you can see the lacy stitching in the gold and then you can see the mylar shining through now the mylar will change colour with the fabric you have it'll be paler with a paler fabric and it'll take on this dark bluey green with a dark fabric underneath um, so you can experiment with the look you want for something like fairies wings or angels wings you'd need to have a light fabric underneath as your base fabric um, now without further ado we shall move on to actually doing the lettering with the easy applique font. So we're going to start with um, choosing our lettering font and if we right click on our lettering fill values icon there we will get our object properties box up and what I want you to do is if you're going to follow along is to find the easy applique font which is um, under E of course there it is and select that one now this applique can um, be made quite large sometimes you want to put one big large letter on something and to find out what sizes you can use of course we've done this before go to your help menu the on-screen manual and I'll get this silly window saying it needs to check you won't get that necessarily um, it's not part of this software and we go to the appendices glossary and index and down to the alphabet samples and if you know which alphabet you want to look at straight away you can actually use the drop down menu and come down rather than page through and we're going to the easy applique font there so select that and it will come up here in your screen now it says here easy applique makes applique letters which have uneven stroke width and rounded serifs each letter includes three stitching layers the placement line zigzag tack down and finally a satin stitch cover now down the bottom we've got our different um, properties of that and in the recommended letter height you can have up to 70 millimeters from 30 to 70 millimeters high and uh, so you just, it's a good um, thing to check that size range because you want to stay in that size range so once you've checked that we'll close that and we'll change our height here to 70 which is the maximum for that font and then we just want a capital A or you could use any letter of the alphabet this is all capitals in this font oh, sorry backspace capital A and go OK and then of course we have to left screen on our left click on our screen where we want the letter and I've just brought it in the middle here now appliques by nature are tied together that is um, you can't select an individual part of the applique every time you try to select it will select the whole lot but you'll notice it's not actually grouped there's no group symbol down here it's just to do with the applique um, feature so the only way you can break this up into separate um, pieces is to click on the break apart tool okay and then you'll have your separate pieces of your applique that you can select individually and if I go into out of artistic view I can you can see I've got the satin stitch selected now I'll have the tack down stitch selected there and the running stitch selected there I'll zoom in so you can see that um, just zoom in with my no it's not going to okay You see I can select the individual parts and the satin stitch okay 
show all now that will give it a nice large one for you to see now you could just do this as an applique but if you want to put mylar into it you will need some sort of cover stitch in the center area because one big sheet of mylar doesn't look particularly attractive it always looks better if it's covered with um, one of the fills the fancy fill I think it is um, Oh, sorry, fills. Fancy fill is um, a solid fill. Um, we want pattern fill, which is the open fill. And you can see because I clicked on fill, I changed my outline to fill. So let's just change that back to satin stitch and satin. Because once we have um, broken apart the letter, we can change any of the individual objects in the applique now. Um, but I've got it back to where it was. Now what I want to do is I want to create this area in the middle. And you can do that by selecting the out, outer satin stitch, copy it, paste it back in. So you've got two of them now. They're both the same colour, but if we go to our colour film and click on the individual objects, we can see that we have got two outlines. Now, um, we want to change the second outline to a different colour. Let's just select them both. Well, in fact, um, that's not going to help us, that little hole in the middle, so we'll just delete that one. And we'll just change our second outline to a red so you can see what's going on. Okay, so we now have the outline in green with the center hole, which is your applique outline, final stitching. And we have a second outline in red. And if we go, while it's selected, the red one, we'll go over and change it to a uh, fill. Okay, I'll just go back to artistic view so you can see what's happening here. Now the fill has gone on top of the outline and we don't want that so we're going to grab it and move it back up. I did this with the fish, the applique fish. We want it before the satin outline. Okay, that's better. Now I'll put this one to one. Okay, this is quite a large area of stitching. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to do that sort of stitching with the outline, you wouldn't need it to do it as an applique. So you could delete your um, tack down and your um, placement lines here, out of here, and you would have a filled in letter with stitching. However, you've got a filled in part here. So what we need to do is while this is selected, we need to add a hole and so we can go over to our add holes I'll just go out of artistic view so you can see that I have actually got the pink area selected and I'm going to add a hole and I'm just going to right click because this has all got curvy there's no sharp edges right click around the hole enter and enter again and now that's removed that center piece of the stitching let's go back to artistic view okay that's better so you could stitch that out just like that if you wanted to and as I said remove it just um, select these parts here the tack down and the placement line and delete them you won't need them you could put an underlay under the satin stitch if you uh, w which would be a good idea um, to, now that there's no tack down or placement line there's nothing underneath that satin stitch so you could put an underlay under that by selecting it and going to your object properties and putting in your underlay now that's pretty plain and uninteresting I'm leaving it as an applique because you may want to put fabric in there but I'm going to select the red and um, go to the object properties and we can actually change the type of fill stitch there so we're using a step fill at the moment and there's a range of different step fills you could use just by selecting your different fills here apply and you'll get a different step fill I'll move this out of the way so you can see okay so you can already add some interest just by changing the step fill you could go to a I wouldn't go to a satin fill because the area is too far too large you could go to a fancy fill 
and the fancy fill is like an embossed um, satin stitch with different patterns and you have a range of patterns to choose here you could in fact choose the letter A embossed in there and apply that so then you have a letter A with lots of little letter A's inside um, or you could choose any of the other patterns and apply them so you can play around to your heart's content here just choosing different patterns um, and applying them okay some will look better than others um, that's the fancy fill or you could ripple fill is not suitable for this black work fill is okay apply so you could get this sort of open lacy pattern um, but I like to use the and lace work you've got a few choices of lace work <coughs> excuse me so you could go with one of those okay and the one I like best is the pattern fill so we'll apply that okay that's quite a large pattern but we could choose from a huge range of patterns and I didn't actually Uh, that's far too big that one but I didn't actually choose a pattern that I was going to use did I for this one so just bear with me for a minute while I find something suitable go back to the heirloom there's a lovely little one in here this one okay apply that one this is a gorgeous little pattern now if you've got an open pattern like this you will see if you put a fabric underneath you will actually see the fabric through it as well so you could use a contrast color um, you could use tone on tone and with a close um, feel like this you could actually put your mylar in and you would have a nice glittery letter A there is another one you can do which is the cross stitch which we is new to version 6 we can use actually use cross stitch as a fill here in this part of the software instead of having to go to cross stitch apply that now that's filled with a tiny little cross you can actually change your um, stitches per inch um, in this section here so you can make them quite large now don't increase the number because that increases the number of stitches per inch which actually makes them smaller so you need to decrease the stitches per inch to get a larger cross so I'll put seven in there so it'll be twice the size and apply that and then we've got quite an open cross stitch in there as well and that could also go over mylar or you could have it just as it is without any um, fabric underneath or you could have ordinary fabric now let's just close that for a minute what we've got now because we broke it apart is we've got all these different areas and they can all be brought out separately so for instance I could select the um, the placement line which is just a single outline and I could bring that out now why have I lost my let's go individual objects again that's better I've got the placement line of these two parts of the A shift so I've got the hole in the middle and the A and if I select them both and it's probably a good idea to group them so they stay together you can then just pull them out so you now have an outline of the letter A now this works particularly well in this font don't try this with a lot of different fonts the reason this works so well with this font is because it's just one continuous satin outline we haven't got lots of little bits and it also is um, one area for the whole letter um, some of the other fonts have separate satin pieces for each part of the B for instance and then a separate line for the front and you won't get a nice outline like this but with this particular font you get a beautiful outline and then you can change the properties of the outline itself so you can see down here the outline is a single run at the moment I could um, well or we can bring up the object properties it's easier so we can see it's single run at the moment I can change that to triple and apply that let's move this across so you can see it's bolder I could change it to the um, stem stitch and apply that that's quite an attractive um, letter A now you could use these as um, big outlines particularly with the triple or the single outline on a quilt just to give um, an embossed look to your quilt or use it as a quilting um, stitch 
to hold your quilt together. The other one that's nice is the back stitch. Apply that. Okay. Now, pat pattern run and that sort of thing doesn't look so good. As you can see, you can't really see the letter um, very well, so that's not a good choice. Um, blanket stitch you will have a problem in that your blanket stitch will face inwards on that inner circle. So um, it's not such a good one either. Had I left it as an applique, we might have been able to sort that out. I'm going to cover that in an, another video. Um, I think I've mentioned, I've gone over it once, but there is a way to turn that um, blanket stitch over the other way, and I'll cover that in the next video. All right. Um, okay, now close that I can also select the cross stitch part and pull that out as a separate letter and then I've just got a cross stitch a without an outline I could undo that I could leave the cross stitch with an outline but I can change the type of outline by selecting the green and I'll need to select the other part of the green as well okay and I can change that outline down here to any of my types of stitches so I could well before I change the type of stitch I'll go to the object properties I could actually um, whoops I've gone to the um, cross stitch one again accidentally so we'll just reselect this shift okay now our satin outline here is automatic spacing which is what I'm going to leave it at but we've got a satin width um, we have to sorry change to manual stitch spacing will give us our um, density of the stitching the satin width is blank as you can see I'm just going to try and type something in there I haven't actually tried this but let's um, it usually is about four or five the border but we could make it wider let's try six millimeter border and apply that okay that worked so even though it had no value in there you can increase the value so that's made a wider border and of course you could go down to um, sorry a we had six millimeter in there let's put three millimeter in there to halve it and apply that okay so now I've got a slightly more delicate border I wouldn't um, go too thin if I was actually putting fabric three would be always my minimum for um, covering an applique fabric but if I was just doing it as a letter without fabric I could even go down to um, well three is probably as low as I would go two millimeters you tend to pull up bobbin thread and um, get problems with a very very fine satin stitch in such you know a long area like this it's okay for sh small little areas but once you do this it doesn't stitch out as nicely okay um, we could even change that outline to something totally different so let's drop down our menu here and let's change our outline to um, stem stitch and apply that okay now it looks a bit messy because we have our um, tack down and so I'm going to remove that let's go like this let's remove the tack down delete that okay now we've got a nice stem stitch around and we haven't got a placement line anymore either I don't think let me just check no that's the um, blanket stitch A here and then we've got our cross stitch and our stem stitch so there's a lot you can do with this particular font um, either making it an applique or just making it an individual letter um, in fact with Mylar you don't actually have to um, have an absolute perfect applique pattern if you stitch that over mylar it would tear away quite nicely from around the edges and the center hole so you could actually still put mylar under that one even though it's not got a placement line or a cutting line um so that's a good font to play around with and it's you know you can do a nice big one thanks very much